just what I mean You too, team, keep it clean You see my boy, he like got a man Keep it clean Happy Friday I hope y'all are doing really, really good I'm doing good The family's doing good Appreciate y'all Now we are gonna get back to questions from subscribers tomorrow But something that I was thinking about And, and I wanted to get you all's feedback Because right now We're not at the midpoint of the season But we are on the bye week So we got some extra time to analyze Some extra time to criticize And some extra time to realize Exactly where the Ravens are at this point right here and right now and of course with the injuries to jk dobbins and gus edwards that did and justice hill too that did the ravens absolutely no favors whatsoever in the running back department but something in a way that i felt i know some other people felt this way too but i can only speak for myself uh, a way that i felt was that all right those are big losses but Running back with the Ravens, yeah, plug and play, we'll be straight. Okay, cool. The running game, it'll, it'll slack off a little bit, but it ain't going to be nothing too crazy, right? Wrong. Um, we definitely see every week, we definitely feel every single week uh, just how much J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards are, are really missed with this Ravens offense. Um, so the Ravens, like any team that's dealing with injuries, they had to adjust, they had to compensate, and they had to replace uh, so the way that they replaced them was by adding uh, Latavius Murray. They added Devontae Freeman. And they also added uh, Le'Veon Bell. And somebody who was already on the roster was Tyson Williams. Now, initially, when I was thinking about this, my initial thoughts were going to be like, how, 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 do, how was Le'Veon Bell? How has Le'Veon Bell been this season? Because I felt like with Le'Veon Bell, out of all the running backs, like he was the one where I felt like the expectations would be the highest. But then I thought, wait a minute, we might as well talk about all four of them. Um, so while we dive into this, sit back, relax, and let's have a conversation. Well, we can start this conversation by looking at numbers. Now, in my opinion, the numbers for the running game, they tell some of the story, but they don't really tell the whole thing. If we look at Latavius Murray, obviously we're excluding Lamar Jackson. He's not a running back. Well, it actually depends on who you ask because you know some people still with this. Oh, he's a running back. Anyway, no. Um, Latavius Murray, he has uh, 59 rushes for 212 yards. He's averaging 3.6 yards a carry. Uh, Tyson Williams, he has 33 rushes for 180 yards. He's averaging 5.5 yards a carry. Devontae Freeman, he has 20 rushes for 109 yards. He's averaging 5.4 yards a carry. <laughs> Le'Veon Bell, he has 17 rushes for 34 yards. He's averaging 2, point yard, two yards a carry. I was about to say 2.0 yards per carry. Um, so, just to start off with Le'Veon Bell, because like I said, I felt like the expectations for him uh, were the highest because of just who he is, uh, because of what he's done in this league, um, because of the type of player that he is. And we know Le'Veon Bell, we know he was a baller. Obviously, more so with the Pittsburgh Steelers more than anybody, much more than he was with the Jets and way more than he was with the Chiefs. Uh, but Le'Veon Bell, he used to be that dude. So when the Ravens brought him over, initially, I told you, I, I did not feel like um, he was the best fit. I uh, I feel like and, and with his decision making, it was just he he was, I just felt like he was just too patient. I felt like he was just way too patient of a runner, and it wasn't gonna be a good fit. So then I, I just sat back, I watched film on him, and then I was like, but wait a minute, he has the ability to make quick decisions because I, I saw him do that when I was watching film. I was like, he's not just he he is a patient runner, but he can also move quickly. He can also make his decisions like that. So I was like, okay, so we're going to need the latter Le'Veon Bell to show up for the Ravens. And so far, I, I mean, just to be straight up, it's, it's been a disappointment so far. It's been a disappointment with Le'Veon Bell so far. Um, and, and it has seemed as if the Ravens, they, they, you could tell they really want to make this thing work. And not saying that it can't, because there's still a lot of season left. And right now, Ravens ain't really got no choice anyway. But you could tell the Ravens, they, they really value Le'Veon Bell. Now, blocking-wise, okay, Le'Veon Bell, you've been doing this thing for the most part, especially in uh, the Broncos game. But Le'Veon Bell as a blocker, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, running the ball, it just it hasn't been there so far. It really hasn't. And the Ravens have almost been like, especially the last game, it just felt like they were almost just force-feeding Le'Veon Bell. 
to where they're like, all right, he, he got to make something happen. All right, we're going to get that old Le'Veon back. All right, Le'Veon, he's going to show up. Okay, all right, this is going to be the play. But it just, it wasn't happening. And I, I do commend them, though, because you want to get a hot hand hot. And the way that you get somebody's hand hot, you, you keep giving them the ball. You keep giving them opportunities. You keep giving them chances. So I respect that the Ravens were doing that. But with Le'Veon Bell, it just it, it, it hasn't been working yet. Uh, so it's to be determined. And one thing that I've been really surprised about, um, something that we've all kind of expected, um, but at the same time, even though we expected it, I was still a little bit worried about it, was Le'Veon Bell as a receiver. I, I, I was wondering, oh, man, okay, we all expected the Ravens to really use Le'Veon Bell more as a receiver, but they hadn't really done it much. And something that I was concerned about if the Ravens were to use him as a receiver would be to, all right, hopefully they don't do those things where, like they used to do with Lamar, obviously different player, different position, but in different value to the team. But I remember when, when Lamar used to come out on the field, you knew the play, before he was starting, when Joe Flacco was still starting, you knew every time you saw that number eight, he's keeping the ball. That's it. He's keeping the ball. It ain't going to nobody. 9.9 .9 times out of 10, Lamar's going to keep the ball. So they could key in on him. So what I didn't want to happen with Le'Veon Bell was like, all right, you never every time you see that number 17 out there, that means Le'Veon Bell is going to get the ball. That's, that's what we didn't want to happen. Um, but he just, he hasn't had it yet. Uh, every time he gets the ball, it, like, it just feels like everything is going in slow motion. Uh, it feels like just everything just slows way down. There was a play uh, against the Chargers. Uh, actually, a couple of them. Oh, every time you touch the ball. But there was one against the Chargers where I think Lamar pitched it to him. And Le'Veon Bell got the ball, and it, it was like Lamar was going, going, then he pitched it, and then, he, then Le'Veon Bell got it, and he just started moving slow. Um, but he just he doesn't have that same burst, and maybe it could be because the blocks aren't developing properly in front of him. Because we know the offensive line has not been a good offensive line uh, this year, uh, especially run blocking. They just a, a lot of defensive linemen, linebackers, they'll be in the backfield quick. I mean, they'll be in the backfield quick for a lot of passing plays too, but certainly when it comes to run blocking, it, it has been rough. Uh, but again, his style, and, and we've seen the patient runs too. We've seen the runs with Le'Veon Bell. He, he'll wait, and he kind of like do that thing with his hand where he directs the offensive line. Where he's like waiting, 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 waiting. And then he waited <laughs> a little bit too long, and then the linebacker, oh, tackle for a two-yard loss. So, my analysis with Le'Veon Bell at this point of the season, it just, it hasn't worked out so far uh, with him and the Ravens. And again, hopefully they get more comfortable with each other. Hopefully that offensive line gets stronger. They could just become a unit, like really become a unit and really get this run game going. Because the passing game, we know the passing game could do its thing. But if you could get the run game, because it's with the Ravens, sometimes it can be one or the other. And we would love it for it to be both. But the fact that we have in this conversation right now and the running game has not been what it used to be. And the Ravens are sitting at five and two. That's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. If you would have told me, told a lot of us going into the season, the Ravens running game. they I mean, outside of Lamar, Ravens running game ain't really going to be nothing. Ain't going to be nothing special. And, and, and you would have told us that. J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards and Justice Hill all went down. He'd be like, oh, boy. I. So what do you think the record's going to be through seven games? Ah, man, I, I couldn't even tell you, and I don't even want to think about it. But the fact that they're sitting at 5-2 and two right now, despite that, says a lot about this team. Now, moving on from Le'Veon Bell, uh, Latavius Murray. Um, and he's been with the Ravens from the beginning of the season, like right before the beginning of the season, because Saints were like, all right, we we gonna okie doke you. We want you to take a pay cut. We gonna we gonna make him take a pay cut right before the season starts. And you know what? He ain't gonna have many suitors because a lot of, most teams' rosters are already set. Like, <laughs> oh, we good. We gonna get him. He about to get this pay cut. We gonna keep Latavius Murray. Let's get it, man. All right, hey Latavius, what's up? Hey, what's going on, champ? We need you to take a pay cut. We, you just need to reduce your salary by a couple million dollars. Hey, how about that? No. I don't want to do it. And then Saints are probably looking around like, what? You did, you turning us that? What? And nope, I don't want to do it. And he didn't do it. Got released. 
And when he got released, he, he said he knew about the situation with the Ravens. I mean, he, said, he, he said he wanted to play for the Ravens. And when he said that, I'm like, nah, this, this stuff just don't work like that in the Ravens' favor. Like, it, that, that, it ain't going to happen. Like, nah, it ain't, it ain't going to happen. It happened. It happened. And I was like, oh, wow. Wow. And in no world did I ever think that the Ravens were going to sign Devontae Freeman and Le Le'Veon Bell and Latavius Murray. They signed all three of them. But with Latavius Murray, uh, with his style, his style, I felt like his style, it was a decent fit. It definitely wasn't what we had, but it was like a... Uh, Kind of, like Gus Edwards is north and south guy. I mean, he can move a little east and west now too, but he's that's your north and south guy. Latavius Murray is very north and south. He's he's higher though. He he's high up because he's like six six two something like that six one six two. So I want to say his style is similar to Gus Edwards, but it's like similar but not similar all at the same time. If you get what I mean. Um, but so far I feel like with Latavius Murray, um, he just. I feel like their expectations with him are low. I feel like they don't really, and maybe because it's, maybe it's my expectations. Because I feel like with the Ravens, I feel like they don't really expect him to pop for some big run, to pop for some big gain or out of nowhere. I feel like that that's not their expectation with him. I feel like when, when they hand him the ball, they expect him to get like three, four yards, and they expect him to always fall forward. Always just go down. They don't expect him to do all the dancing around and stuff. And No, that, straight up, straight forward. That's it. Hit the hole, get what you can get. And that's it. But again, that might just be my expectations. Because uh, that's what we usually see from Latavius Murray. Now, he'll pop off like seven, eight yards sometimes here and there. But nothing crazy. But again, that's the expectation. Now, um, one thing to, to, to keep in mind that we've seen a lot, a lot less RPOs. A lot less. And I think a huge reason for that is because the... Just them being familiar with the RPO, them being familiar with Lamar Jackson, then the, the chemistry is just still off. So it makes it a lot harder for the Ravens to run that RPO that he was so used to running with J.K., that he was so used to running with Gus Edwards, that he was even used to running with Justice. It makes it harder because these guys, they ain't come from offenses with that. These guys, they're not used to Lamar like J.K. Again, J.K. and Gus and Justice is so they missed big time. They all missed big time because. They knew Lamar. Lamar knew them. They knew. Like, they, they know when Lamar puts it in their chest, they knew if Lamar either going to pull or he going he gonna to get handed off. They knew. But now you got these guys that you just had to pick up off the street out of nowhere, and they don't know him like that. So I think that's a huge reason why the RPO just has not been there because of that. They, they don't know him like that. They're not familiar with this system yet. So we'll see how that goes in the future. Now, um, but yeah, well, Latavius Murray, he's, uh, again, I think he, I, I feel like he's just done what's expected. But again, I think I'm thinking of my own expectations. So I don't know what the Ravens expect from him. But they do value him and, and they do really appreciate him because he came in and we was all like, all right, Tyson, 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 this, Tyson, that. But Latavius Murray came in and Ravens was like, oh, no. Y'all y'all saying Ty. We saying Tave. Tavius Murray. Um, so he definitely took it from Tyson Williams. And just to transition from one running back to the next, Tyson Williams. Tyson Williams, somebody that I, I defended heavy. Y'all already know. Because I, I wanted him to get the shot. Because this was his opportunity. Because, again, injuries, they suck. They're the worst. But what they do is provide opportunity for people who may not have gotten that, that opportunity. It happens. Injuries, or if the guy in front of you just hasn't been doing well, stuff happens. Guys come up. Look at Gus Edwards. It, it, it happens. Got, stuff happens, man. So with that being said, uh, Tyson Williams, I was like, this is his chance. And what he showed us in the preseason, I'm like, all right, let's go. Let's go. Then even in the Raiders game, he had popped off for, for a couple of big runs early on. He did have that fumble on the sideline. And you know how Harbaugh is about fumble. I mean, really any coach about fumble, but Harbaugh, boy, you, you just put that ball on the ground. And you not, if you put that ball on the ground and you're not one of my top guys, 
oh yeah, to the doghouse you go. Now, if he was a top guy, he fumbled the ball, Harbaugh would be like, oh, there was no fumble, challenge that. But you're not one of the top guys, so you can't drop the ball. Well, with Tyson Williams, I just felt like he was our best runner, our most explosive runner. A runner who would hit the hole, he could make somebody miss, and he had a good amount of speed, too, to where when he accelerates, even when he makes a cut, he doesn't decelerate. He still keeps that speed. I'm like, all right, this guy, yes, okay, even though he lost Gus, even though he lost JK, we still got Tyson. Ty Ty, let's go. And in the Raiders game, again, early on, I think the, in the first half, he had seven carries, was doing his thing. But in the second half, he had two carries. And I was like, whoa, what, what happened? Where'd he go? Disappeared. And then that's just, that's how it would be throughout the remainder of the season till this point. He would just be involved less and less and less. And then he got, he was inactive for what, two games, I believe? He was inactive. I was like, oh, okay. And I, I just knew that the Ravens, they, they, they didn't, they fell out of favor with him. I mean, they were never really in favor with him, but they fell out of favor with him. They fell out of, out of love with him, and it's just, this is one of those situations right now where it's like, all right, when are y'all gonna move on? Because that's the expectation for me right now. I, I've said it in multiple videos that I don't expect him to be with the Ravens when they play the Vikings. Um, but I just, I, I, I don't, I just, you can just tell. Actions speak louder than words, and by their actions and their usage of Tyson Williams, you can tell, like, they like, mm, nah, this guy, nope. And it's hard for me to defend, that, to defend him in, in, with what happened in the last game against the Bengals on that fourth. Really, that I think it was the same series, the same drive, where it was the fourth down, and Lamar, he, he, he was either calling the audible or, or he needed to tell Tyson to move somewhere. It's something. It's just Tyson just didn't get it. He didn't get it. And Lamar was like telling him something, da 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 And Tyson was like, what? And that play clock's just going, going, going. Time's ticking, ticking, ticking. And that, that was bad, but then that wasn't even the worst part. The worst part was on the fourth down play. Where Lamar threw him the ball. He made one man miss. It's like, okay, even the game, it, it wasn't over. It was close to being over, but it wasn't over yet. But Lamar threw him the ball. He made one guy miss. Then after that, he ended up running out of bounds. And if you are not giving effort, despite what the Ravens are doing with you, even if it's like, man, these guys, they trying me. They ain't using me. They ain't giving me no PT. They got me riding pine, man. Like, come. If you get an opportunity and you don't give effort, it's tough to defend, man. It's tough. Even if the game is over, man, it's like that. Like, because the Ravens, because you just never know. Because Ravens, we've seen it this year. They done, they done pulled some crazy stuff, man. They done pulled some crazy stuff. But if you you give up, like, and they get just ran out of bounds. Didn't even get tackled. Just ran out of bounds. Didn't try to cut up. Didn't try to pitch it back. To, just ran out of bounds. And I was like, wow. I just. It was crazy. And it was fourth down. It, 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 was, it was crazy. So even though Tyson is, is the best runner. Still. The most explosive. He got the most potential out of these guys. In the Ravens offense. I just. I, I, don't, I don't see him remaining with the team. And if by some chance. Somehow. Some way he does. He's not going to get the opportunities. He's not. And in order for him to get any opportunity, something crazy would have to happen to all the guys in front of him. But he is not going to be getting the opportunities, not at, not, especially not after that game. Like, he was already not getting the opportunities, but then for what happened in the last game, it, it's definitely not happening now. And it's tough, man. It's tough. It's tough. So that's that for Tyson Williams. Now, um... Devontae Freeman. Devontae Freeman was somebody that uh, I felt like, I remember when um, the Ravens, when they had Latavius, I mean, no, when they had Devontae Freeman and Le'Veon Bell in for a visit, I was like, Devontae Freeman is the better fit. Because Devontae Freeman, uh, he still got some burst left. He still got some juice left. And he makes his decisions quick. 
So when Lamar put it in his chest, he go, oh, he take off. That's it. Okay, cool. That's what we need. Um, and then they, like I said, they signed both of them. I was like, oh, okay, bring them all on. That's fine. Um, but he he started off. I think his first or second run of his Ravens career was a, it was a long one. Um, but then he started getting like like little happy feet, got a little hesitant. Uh, and maybe he just maybe it's because he don't trust the offensive line. He like man, these dudes like ooh, these guys not blocking. Um, and maybe it's just maybe he just had ended up being a hesitant runner. Maybe he didn't trust himself. Maybe he didn't trust whatever hole he thought he saw. But then you saw as as, as time has been going on, he's been looking more and more comfortable. As the season has been going on, he's been he's been trending up quite a bit. So I've been loving that from Devontae Freeman. So now, right now, at this point, I feel like he is our best, well, our best runner that will get an opportunity. I feel like that's Devontae Freeman, and he's also been showing this stuff in in the passing game too, especially in that comeback against the Colts. He was eating, man. Lamar was he kept dumping it off to him over and over and over. Coach want to leave him open. Okay, Lamar check down, boom. Hit Devontae Freeman. But I, I've been he's been a running back that's been trending up uh for me with the Ravens. Cause I feel like with Le'Veon Bell, he's been trending down. It's not it's it's not like the arrow is like pointing straight down, but it's like slowly slanting down. With Latavius Murray, um, it's been sort of just not flat line, I don't want to use that term, but it's been just that just the arrow's been straight. Like he hasn't been trending up, he hasn't been trending down for me. It's just been boom, like that. Uh Tyson Williams, <laughs> he trending like way down. Only because of the situation and again that fourth down play. And then of course the way that they didn't haven't used him. Um but Devontae Freeman, he he would be trending up for me. Uh so yeah. So hopefully um Ravens, the, they can get more out of their running backs. But, again, a big part of it is the offensive line for sure. Um, but it's also the running backs, too. It's also them. Uh, the offensive line can't be perfect every single play. We wish they could be, but we know they're not. And we definitely know they're not. Uh, so it, it, these running backs, they just they, they got to do a little bit more. A little bit more. Of course, Latavius Murray, when he comes back healthy, uh, he'll be featured a bit more. Um, Nate McCrary, who's on a practice squad, would not be surprised if he got a shot. Really wouldn't. Wouldn't be surprised if he got a shot. If he ended up getting like a call up or something, just so they could see a little bit. So, we'll see, man. Anyway, team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Thank you all for listening. Um, and of course, I already know y'all will, but let me know how you feel about all these running backs that the Ravens got, how they've been doing. How they been fitting in, and if you think they will continue to fit in a little bit better, or you think that some relationships are just not a match, we out. Shout out to Graven.